what is hypothermia therapy? So hypothermia therapy means using heat to treat cancer. There are many ways to use heat to treat cancer, but when we talk about hypothermia therapy, we're really talking about heating uh, the whole body or part of the body to a fever range of temperatures, so it's around 41 degrees, and a little bit either side of that. There are other forms of hypothermia therapy like ablation, where you just destroy tissue using heat. But generally when people talk about hypothermia therapy for cancer, it's heating the whole body or an area of the body to a fever temperature and keeping that area of the body or the whole body at that temperature for a certain period of time. I think the current the best practice is to try and heat the target area to about 41 degrees for about 40 minutes. Um, and it's hard to stand much more heat than that really. There are various ways of heating people up. You could put people in something like a sauna, so that would be a kind of whole body hypothermia therapy. Um, and, and clinics may have a small sauna-like room. You may have to wear some kind of sauna suit as well. Um, and it's the temperatures like accurately controlled. Um, it's not like just going to a sauna, a gym. Um, it's slightly more scientific than that. Or you could have hypothermia on a small area of the body. Uh, that would generally be done by some kind of heated pad or heating pad. And then you can have hypothermia on a region of the body. Um, so an area maybe um, 30 centimetres across, something like that. Um, and the heating could be done with infrared or using um, radio waves to heat up the body. Now it's quite technical, um, just sitting in front of a heater is probably not going to make any difference because um, the human body is, is very good at maintaining temperature, uh, homeostasis, it's what keeps us alive as warm-blooded cre warm warm creatures. Um, so you need a method that is um, uses some data and some sensors to make sure that the appropriate part of the body is heated to the correct temperature. Simple hypothermia machines like the infrared ones, they tend to be um, aimed at heating the whole body um, and they seem to be less effective than regional hypothermia therapy. So regional hypothermia therapy, for example, you may use radio waves and uh, as a patient you'll lie down on a treatment table and go into a tunnel-like machine. looks a bit like an MRI scanner or CT scanner. And you'll, be, um, you'll have two transceivers um, placed up against your body quite tightly. Um, usually with uh, like a conductive gel between a transceiver and your body to make a good connection. And you'll be heated up um, and there'll be various sensors. Um, in I think maybe some machines can um, like do a heat map of the body. Um, the machine I was treated with um, has like a simulated heat map using um, data, like clinical data. And it's hot and uncomfortable and can be a little bit painful when the machine's on. Um, it stops straight away, that any discomfort tends to stop straight away when the machine's turned off. Some of the um, discomfort comes from currents in uh, eddy currents building up um, or appearing in the body 
So that's why uh, conductive gel is used like a scimitar. Well, I think it is exactly the same as ultrasound gel. And also the transceiver sort of pushed kind of quite hard on your body um, to try and um, reduce the, the kind of pain of um, yeah mm. eddy currents in your body. And you can have this um, several times a week. Uh, I've heard that some data shows having it um, more than kind of three times a week is, is counterproductive. So one of the things that happens when you heat cells to fever range is you get um, proteins f form on the outside of the cell, uh, heat shock proteins. Um, it seems some form on the outside of the cell, some are in the cell and move across the cell membrane to the outside of the cell. I'm not really sure of the mechanics of how it works. And certain heat shock proteins are identified as cell damage by the immune system and therefore the immune system is able to attack those cancer cells. Heat shock proteins will form on healthy cells as well, not just the cancer cells, but healthy cells are very, very good at heat repair. Um, as soon as the machine's turned off, the heat repair starts. Cancer cells are poor at self-repair. Um, and yeah, there are other benefits of hypothermia therapy, uh, increased blood flow in the tissue, generally for about 24 hours after you've stopped the um, heat itself. So if you're having chemotherapy, um, that's useful because it helps more chemo agent get into the tissues. If you think about like large cancer tumors, often have a very poor blood supply inside. Um, there may be sort of necrotic kind of dead tissue in, in, in the center of the cancer cell. Uh, sent to the cancer tumor as well. So get, getting um, chemotherapy agent into big tumors is, is an issue. So hypothermia helps with that. Um, so it's, it's quite a uh, complex therapy, like how it works is complex, but from a patient's point of view, you uh, lie there, suffer some discomfort and uh, go home later and repeat this for weeks, months, years. <laughs> um, it's definitely a, a, a treatment worth looking into because it, it seems to um, make other treatments work more effectively. Because it increases the blood flow, it kind of oxygenates the tumor tissue, which is very useful if you're having radiotherapy because uh, radiotherapy works by uh, causing um, free radicals to, to form in the cells, um, so more oxygenated um, tissue in, in the tumour means that these oxygen free radicals will, will form more readily and uh, cause cell death and hopefully give you a good scan result later on. So uh, if you have questions about hypothermia therapy, please uh, post them below this video and I'll answer your questions um, either with a reply to your question or make a video for you. Thanks a lot.